Before my old channel got deleted, I covered a series called Gachi Akuta. There was a lot of hype surrounding it when the first chapter dropped. Not as big as Kagadabachi, but still very big. I read the first few chapters when it dropped and I really enjoyed it. Over time, I stopped reading it around chapter 25 or so. No particular reason why I dropped it. So recently, I decided to jump back into it and my lord, I have been missing out. All this video is going to be is just a glaze session on this goaded series. If you're new here, my name is You Know and now you know. If you enjoyed this video at any point, leaving a like will be appreciated. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to check out the channel. And if you like what you see, kick back, stay a while, and hit the subscribe button. Now on to the video. Gachi Akata is written by Kei Orana. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. She was a big fan of Soul Eater, like me, and worked as an assistant on Fire Force. You could clearly tell by the art in Gachi Akata. It is very reminiscent. It was serialized in Weekly Shonen Magazine in February 2022. The story follows an orphan named Rudo, who lives in the slums with his foster father, Recto. They earn a living by carrying out criminal activities in the town. Though urged by Recto to stop doing dangerous activities before he gets caught, Rudo had no intentions of stopping, as he's convinced it's the only way to make money. However, one day he comes home and finds Recto murdered, and he is ultimately accused by everyone for this gruesome crime. As he is sentenced into the abyss, Rudo vows with fury to kill the person responsible and all of society that accused him of murdering his family. The series is amazing. It has a very cool power system that doesn't rush us into introducing it, it really takes its time. The characters carry something called a vital instrument, or a jinky. This item is very special to each character and must be treated with great care. There is one jinky per user. Examples of this is having very simple items turn into crazy weapons like having scissors or an umbrella turning into weapons that look like it was ripped right out of Monster Hunter. Rudo's powers is a bit more unique and plays right into his character. Rudo's gloves gives him the power to repurpose trash. By making content with an object that was discarded, Rudo has the capability of turning it into a jinky, wringing out the use that is still left in the said object. However, each item crumbles after serving its purpose. This really plays on his character seeing how he was brought up and how he valued each thing. With this ability, every battle feels very different and diverse. It truly stands out. Now, one thing I'm going to say a lot in this review is personality. This series is full of it. Now, let's talk about the characters filled with that personality. Let's start with Engine. He has a bright, fun personality, but he's not extremely high energy either. He's actually quite chilled and laid back. He refers to himself just the average janitor, showing he's pretty much humble despite his incredible abilities. We have Zonka. He keeps a calm composure, even when he's upset. However, internally, he is quick to lose his temper and feed into his emotions. Whether it's anger or disgust, he's quite exaggerated with his outbursts. We have Rio, a girl that lives carefree and mindless. She is considered somewhat childish and unprofessional and gets excited on the prospect of challenge, stating a strong opponent gets her fired up. When it comes to manga, one of the things that interests me the most is the art. Pages are beautifully filled with personality. The characters truly shine. It's the perfect blend of roughness and clarity, and it's honestly amazing. Each character stands out boldly, and again, personality. I know I keep saying it, but the series nails the personality. Along with the art in here, we also see graffiti-style drawings crafted by Hideyoshi, and honestly, all of them need to be made into posters. With the story, this series has so much to offer. Comedy, very intense action, soul-crushing backstories, and one of the best parts about it, heart. During my bids of reading this, I read two arcs, the Lady of Penta arc and the Trash Storm arc, two arcs showing the strengths of the series. The Lady of Penta arc isn't very action based. The cleaners go on a mission to Penta, finding a woman who has information on how to get to the sphere. This arc really doubles down on the world building. We learn that the desert-like land of Penta is borderline a death zone. However, traveling there, we meet Amo. Amo is the core of this arc. She's a very disoriented character that the cleaners is up against. I don't want to spoil it too much, but this goes in a very dark and heartbreaking place when learning her backstory. This was also great for Rudo to be faced with it because he gets to understand the gray area in this world. We even see Rudo get out of character when around her. This arc did a great job making me care for a character that I originally didn't like when introduced. The second arc I went through was the Trash Storm arc. And my god, what a great arc this was. From how it started, to the action, to the big character moments, to the fire ass double page spreads, this arc I wish I reacted to on the channel because I was losing my mind reading it. The leader of the raiders show up in front of the cleaners and kidnaps Rudo and preys on his desires of revenge against the sky people. In this arc we get a good amount of spotlight on Zodil, the leader of the raiders. He makes his first proper appearance in the beginning of this arc and it couldn't have been more perfect. 
He's such a cold, calculated character. Even when he shows no emotion, he is drowning in aura. He runs the show whenever he is on the panel. This arc was full of fantastic fights, and it does the classic shonen trope of split everyone up and have one-on-ones. The execution was absolutely fire. My favorite fight out of all of them being Jabber vs. Sanka. These two are a perfect pair of rivals in the series, and it builds up from the last fight that they had in the Raiders Trap arc. Now I'm keeping everything vague because I truly feel like this series is meant to be read. Along with Kagurabachi, I feel like this series is going to be leading the next generation of shonen. I'm sure you guys want to see more of this series, so I'll be reacting to the manga starting at chapter 85. We also have the anime season roadmap episode featuring Gachi Akata coming up, so be sure you stay tuned for that. Thank you everyone for watching, and until next time, you know where to find you know.